Welcome to Florida Mint on Florida Man with Greg, Wayne, Josh, and Cameron, the podcast where Floridians discuss the legends, lore, and crazy stories that always seem to take place here in Florida. Florida. Merry Christmas, you guys. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Or Two happy days holidays. away from Christmas. Yeah, we're about yeah. to celebrate, or if you're already celebrating, um, or if you're about to celebrate, we just wish you guys a happy one. Definitely. Thank you for listening. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule. Mm-hmm. What a year. To listen to our what show. What a year, baby. 2020 is almost done, guys. Mm. We're almost there. We're celebrating in a big way. Josh That's just right. told yeah. us he somehow got a celebrity well, to call into I, the show. I couldn't pull... The celebrity I wanted. Okay, which was Mel Gibson. Randy Jackson. Randy, oh, the yeah, dog. Yeah, big dog, Randy Jackson. Mm, okay. Uh, so I went to my second choice. Okay. I think y'all are still going to be happy and surprised. In this right. episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Randy Jackson is known for his, like, Christmas spirit. Right. right. Uh, but, yeah, no, I got a second, a second. Second tier celebrity. Yeah, yeah, B. B role. A B lister. And um, we missed his call. Um, but you'll see. He leaves a voicemail. Come on. I'm blessed, man. And he says y'all's name by name. So feel get excited. Get excited here. I'm excited. I'm, I'm pumped. Y'all I say we do the excited. headlines and hear that celebrity call. You got it. Okay, headlines. Headlines. How are you? I'm great. Are you guys good? Very yeah. good. Florida man's not doing too good. Let's hear about it. He's in jail. Okay. All right. Again. So our first Florida man was charged with picking magic mushrooms while carrying an alligator. Okay. Oh, okay. You use the alligator as the claw. Right. To, to reach to down. Up. You don't want to bend over. You don't want to bend down mushrooms. to pick up the mushrooms. You don't yeah. want them on your fingers. That's All right, right. So a Florida man was arrested along with three others uh, by Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation uh, for picking up hallucinogenic mushrooms in the Little Big Econ State Wildlife Management Area. So that in itself is a crime, actually taking something natural out of a wildlife management that you don't have a permit for. Okay. Uh, so that's the first crime. Uh, the second one was picking hallucinogenic <laughs> mushrooms. Well, well, isn't there some type of plausible deniability? Like, right. I didn't know. Right. And then you go, how did you know? Once you take right? the mushrooms, reality bends. But he was leaving uh, all of the other mushrooms. It was, was just he? the, okay. the fun mushrooms. That. Maybe go he was ahead. making a good soup. Maybe. Yeah. A good soup. Mushroom soup. <laughs> Uh, and then the other thing that was happening was he was carrying a two foot alligator in his backpack. Okay. Okay. So uh, that's this, not a crime. That, that should is. Be a crime. I know for crime. a fact it's not a crime. Okay. You've done I've it before. S- I've done it before in front of a cop and then go to jail. Well, <laughs> I've seen a turtle crossing the street. Right. Yeah, and I was just helping him out, put him in my backpack. And I was like, let me get you across the interstate, right. bud. And you put him in your backpack? Yeah. And I hiked him across the interstate. <laughs> okay. And then I dropped him off. I assume that's what this guy's doing. Uh, yeah. Pretty much, except for, uh, you know, all the magic mushrooms. And yes. uh, I don't know how you fit like a, an alligator in a backpack. They have a picture of wow. the uh, alligator is obviously bigger than the backpack. Can I see? Yeah. Thank it's you. Longitudinally. Right huh. And a lot work. of mushrooms in this picture, too. So. Uh, yeah, Do you think don't... he knew it was an alligator because of the mushrooms? Well, I kind of wonder. I think, <laughs> yeah, he thought it was just a lizard. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, you wonder how many of these mushrooms he had first. But, mm. like, I don't know what his purpose in taking the alligator was. Like, was it a pet that he brought with him to the woods? Sounds like mm. a scavenger Or hunt, was it actually. an alligator that he found in the woods that he was bringing home to become a pet? Question. I don't know. Question, yes. Um. Is having a list of a scavenger hunt, does that make things legal? Like if you oh. you say to the police, I'm just on a scavenger hunt. I think right. so. If you're in, two foot in alligator. if you're in a youth group, right? Yeah, right. or one hundred percent. This article reads like a hit piece from Big Pharma. Get them. They don't Jeez. want you they having want you natural know. remedies. Yep. So what do they do? Call the cops on mm-hmm. you. An alligator is a natural remedy. All of a sudden, well, it's it illegal to carry on an alligator. <laughs> A best friend. It's illegal to pick up some it. mushrooms. Thanks, uh, Big Pharma. Yeah. All right, let's go on to the next one. Okay. Uh, no. Florida man climbs on top of a playground um, to tell all the kids in the playground where babies come from. 
Okay. They need okay. to hear it. You know, I wasn't expecting the last part. Yeah. Right. I expected him to say something like, I am God. When did you that's learn? normal, though. Just right? before, before we move on, when did you learn where babies come from, Josh? Uh, uh, 15. <laughs> okay. Cameron. <laughs> HBO Real Sex. Right. 15 years old. Yeah. Okay, right. Cameron, when did you learn where babies come from? I don't know. Uh, maybe when I was like 12 or 13. When you had your son? Yeah. Uh oh. Hello. <laughs> Wait a minute. I, that's where they come from. Right. I, the reason why I bring it I up, was super is this, surprised. This guy, this guy was doing it at a playground. I was seven, Go okay. and a kid told me at school on a playground. Right. So oh, the, okay. yeah, on a playground, yeah. this kid told me, and I didn't believe it in my spirit. But yeah. I, but like something deep down, like carnally, was like, I think he's telling me the truth. Was his name Otis? Holy crap! That's Otis never left guy. the playground. What? He's still left. there. He is still there teaching yep. young children. Dang. Uh, yeah. So, anyways, this guy basically uh, was charged for disorderly conduct because he he climbed on the tallest part of the playground and just started shouting. The British where, are coming. Yeah, where children come from. Go, you know, what's he say exactly? I can't say it. Um, I need but, to know for like <laughs> for reasons. <laughs> Uh, for pa- uh, parents were basically starting to grab their children and just like run away. Well, if yeah. I'm a well, parent, I'm like, I mean, it's about time they learn. As a parent, I right. see a grown man climbing to the very top saying yes. anything. I'm taking my kids and leaving. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. These kids are four, between four and six. Yeah. Shame on yeah. Otis. So okay. anytime you see Otis, 30 year old Otis Whoopsie. climbing on top of the playground and shouting, like Wayne said, absolutely anything, you're going to run. Uh, it also helps that he has a giant face tattoo. Okay. Yeah. Oh, of the act. <laughs> <laughs> it's a diagram. He actually wasn't saying anything. It's a diagram. <laughs> he was just pointing at his face and going, "You gonna learn today. You're mine. <laughs> You're dead." <laughs> uh, all right. Our next headline. We wait. Have... Did he go to jail? Yes, he did. Okay. But he, he's already out. He paid like a hundred and twenty dollar fine. That's nice. it. Well, I mean, it's not that I bad. It's not a huge I crime. guarantee you Mushroom Boy went to jail for like 500 years. Well, it's the alligator, yeah. bro. Yeah. It's the alligator. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. Uh, all right. So our next headline is actually about an alligator as well, specifically mm. a Florida man golfer. Mm. Okay. Okay. Mm. Playing a nice, you know, uh, 18 rounds. That's or right. nine. And, or nine. It's um, 18 holes, one round. Right. But yeah. Oh, two, okay. Yeah. I, got I don't know. It's a I'm round ne- of golf. I've never played. Okay. Okay. He was playing a round. Uh, he was playing around the 18 holes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's the term. <laughs> He's just goofing off. <laughs> He's goofing off. Uh, playing in the grass. Uh, and so, anyways, he he hit his golf ball, I believe yes. is what they're called. Yes, uh, that's true. And uh, it literally landed on the back of a, like a 10-foot alligator so that was Florida, laying dude. next to uh, the water. So... If you think of an alligator, it's got like the scaly yes. backs where like it right. has like ridges. You can on close top your eyes, listeners. Close you your eyes. Uh, picture a long, very big, giant lizard. Ooh, okay. But the 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 scales on his back are raised, so the golf ball is literally sitting kind of in between these ridges mm-hmm. yeah. and sitting. Uh, it hit the alligator, yeah. or I'm not sure if the the ball like bounced onto the alligator or just oh. like plopped. Oh, wow. but right. either way. Uh, it's sitting on this alligator's uh, back. Well, normally a yeah. golfer would, you know, the take golfers pen- say, yeah. uh, play play it as it lies. Well, or you yes. can take a penalty. Yeah. Well, this guy decides to not play it as it lies. He didn't hit it off the alligator's back, uh-huh. but he did walk straight up to this alligator and took his golf ball right well, there's off an understanding. the alligator's there's back. There's an understanding. The alligator there's an understanding. The right. Yeah. I mean, if it's on my back. Yeah. Please you, give you me a get scratch, it off, though. Yeah. Right. Don't and slow I rub. Me. I've said this to people who aren't from Florida. There's a respect. Mm-hmm. The alligators can smell your Floridian blood. Yep. Right. And they don't mess with you. Because of citrus. Because of the citrus. Oh, so if you have enough oranges that day. Yeah, please. It <laughs> mask your smell from the alligator. Respect. This is all factual. People right. are going to walk right into the mouth of a dinosaur. Jeez. And then blame our podcast. They're for like, that. I had oranges in my hand. <laughs> I don't get it. it Why would Josh gift. lie to me? It was a gift. So he basically snagged his ball uh, and ran away. The, the video is like, dude, why? Oh, there's a video of this? Yeah. It's of like, course. You're, you're he talking did like it for a, the video. A 50 cent golf ball. Yeah. And whoa, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, golf balls off. are like $3 each. Okay. Actually. $3 golf ball. A nice title list. Right. Would you rather have a $3 golf ball or your hand? But I also get a YouTube video out of it that's true so it's he's like, just showing off for his girlfriend he's probably like a thousand i assume now. this guy took a nice lob wedge yeah aerial boom dropped it right on there now baby. raise your hand if you're rich there's josh <laughs> <laughs> you've seen my paycheck oh <laughs> uh, all right our next one actually has to do with an animal as that's well what I'm talking i love about. this is a great video he's too a, oh uh, i don't show you the videos but they're great 
listeners, you're going to love this video. You're going to you're going to love hearing me talk about this amazing video. Uh, so a Florida woman yeah. uh, was shocked by an early morning visitor um, when her dog started barking okay. at like four o'clock in the morning. Yes. Okay. And she said, which is kind of normal because the dog likes to, the dog has a uh, doggy door. Right. It's kind of normal for the dog to kind of lay by the doggy door and kind of bark at things outside. Four barks. Which sounds like a terrible a. night sleep, night yeah. of sleep. I mean, your right. dog barking at things yeah. outside. Well, the dog would not stop barking. And so she comes into the living room. The dog is barking at the Christmas tree. Okay, cool. cool. And then she sees the Christmas tree move. And so she decides to get uh, turn the lights on. She grabs a frying pan, uh, and there is a huge raccoon inside the Christmas tree, like snarling at her dog. Wow! Which okay. honestly is like that's intimidating. Raccoons and are like yeah. they're feisty, man. Raccoons but are real feisty. The, uh, it get in there. That's, a, that's the doggy door. Know. The raccoon came in the doggy door. Oh, I didn't put that together. I'm like, yeah. it was in the tree the whole time. I know, but that's the thing is that's why I've never had a doggy door. Oh, you can't trust them. Yeah, once you, what, if something can go out. Well, it's a, not right. a raccoon door. It's a doggy door. Raccoon right. should know. It's labeled. Yeah. yeah. Raccoon, this read, raccoon couldn't read, you said, yeah. correct? I was exactly. illiterate. Right. It's an uh, illiterate raccoon. Yeah. Well, God rest his soul. There's an illiterate raccoon in a woman's Christmas tree. Right. <laughs> uh, she said at first she thought it was a cat, but then as soon as she uh, realized it was a raccoon, she was yeah. like, she said she was like instantly terrified. Oh, yeah. Not of a cat, but no. the raccoon. So she tries to shoo the raccoon back towards the doggy door. With a frying pan? And, with a frying pan. <laughs> Yes. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, the raccoon decides to run the other way and is dangling by her chandelier for I'm like. Sure there's a video. It, what in there the is world? a video. In, in her dining room, just holding on uh, to a is chandelier for like 30 minutes. Is it shooting a movie or something? <laughs> a, a, a Woo? John Woo movie? He's like parkour. <laughs> like Mission Impossible. Uh, so finally, she said after an hour, she finally got the raccoon to uh, run to- back she towards the door. She put a pot door. underneath him, and then when it fell, she's like, Ding. she Whisper said, a lid over it. Go ahead. I was going to say, when something's in your house, it increases the amount of like. Uh, fear that you feel when you and see. hate oh, yeah. for that. Yeah, because if you see a raccoon outside, you're like, oh, it's a raccoon. Yeah, right. You wake up, it's in your house. All of a sudden, it's like, oh my god. Like, I've I think that's a- true. That's yeah, but you still statement. need to have a healthy fear of raccoons. Yeah, they're I not mean, nice animals. I don't think they're they're cute, Good man. but they're they're feisty. They're deceptive. Uh, you never know. Right. Uh, she said that uh, she didn't want to hurt the raccoon. She just mm-hmm. wanted it outside. She said uh, if a raccoon ever comes back through the doggy door and climbs up her Christmas tree, she would she's gonna uh, call animal control this time instead. That's probably good. You know that what? I would have been the first. Raccoons you know. have pockets that they keep trinkets in, they and do. if you can get one of those trinkets, you get good luck for seven years. Really? Yep. That's just what I heard. You're thinking of the raccoon on Harry Potter. Same diff. Yeah, okay. Okay. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you guys uh, remember last week when I told you no. about uh, the body that was in the trash can. Oh, and, I do remember yeah. that. And the, and the guy was like, it's not my trash can. Yeah, Absolutely. not my body, not my yeah. trash can. Right. So we found out the story oh behind the story yeah, came out this week. Yes. So a Florida oh, woman. I don't think I can handle this. Are you ready? No. Florida but, woman confessed to hiding oh. body in trash can to steal social security benefits. Wait, what? Holy. So Manatee County deputies arrested this woman uh, who confessed to hiding a dead body in the trash can. She said it was the dead body was in her house in a closet what? for like three weeks. <laughs> Oof. Uh, and then she put it in a 55 gallon oh, trash God can. God bless. Took it to a neighbor's house, promising to pick it up later. Mm-mm. And so the guy. So that, that guy was telling the truth. That guy was telling guy was, the truth. I told you that guy is too dumb. He's telling the truth. I mean, oh the guy. He's not too dumb. He's innocent and dumb. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I think that what Josh is saying is someone's like, "Hey, hold this trash can." Right. For a bit. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, he yeah, said yeah. it was heavy and it stunk, and yeah. he didn't think well, of nothing. That, well, that's the crazy part. It was in her closet for three weeks. Did she do the murder? No, so that's the thing is oh. she. They don't say anything about how the guy died. Yeah. Uh, they just said said that she admitted she didn't call uh, the police because she wanted to collect this guy's social security benefits after the death, mm-hmm. uh, and so. Uh, she is being charged with abuse of a dead human body with no more charges expected. Mm. Uh, yeah. I mean, which, how are there no more charges expected if she's committing social security fraud? I bet she gets less time than the mushroom guy. Get Jeez, em. come on. Get big I mean, pharma, the, bro. The social security fraud, like, yeah. is a thing, too. So I'm not sure why the article says that. I guess because the check hasn't come in yet. She, well, didn't, she didn't succeed did, in the fraud. It didn't? She, yeah. Maybe I, thought he had, I thought he had the garbage can for like months. Uh, it was, I think from what I can remember, it was probably uh, like a span of five to six weeks. 
Oh, which is a long time. I got yeah. one check. That's a long time. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, sounds uh, worth it. Let me bring you back up. Okay, please. Okay, so uh, we have a Florida man that we talked about last year. Okay, his name is Michael Esmond. Okay. Uh, and last year, Michael uh, paid off utility bills for about thirty six households. Okay. That's right. In his community right. in Gulf Breeze. Yeah, we weren't impressed. Oh God, Josh. Well, I- he stepped it up this year because you weren't impressed, and he paid off utility bills for a hundred and fourteen. Come on, uh, my dude. What happened to him last year? <laughs> What's he doing? He had a better this year, uh, better year this year, I guess. But yeah, he uh, is covering the cost of utility bills for 114 families in his community uh, that were specifically facing uh, having like their power cut off, yeah, so, cool. the water cut off. All I'm so, saying, he no, <laughs> uh, he ended up donating like uh, 7,600 mm. dollars to pay for these uh, past due. All of the the households that he paid for, they were past due bills. Uh, that were, you know, like I said, uh, you know, about to be cut off. Yeah. And so he, he said, um, you know, I don't want anybody's power or, you know, water or anything like that to be yeah. cut off, especially right before Christmas. He said, I've been in that position where my utilities have been cut off because I couldn't pay it. And I don't want anyone else to be in that position. So, uh, which is awesome. I think it's amazing. And I think AK, it's being awesome. this is our Christmas episode. Yeah. Right? I think instead of having a shame corner this time around. Okay. Fame? We have a fame corner. That's right. Man. And we honor this guy, Michael Hastings, mm-hmm. with a song. His name's Michael Esmond. Michael Esmond. But his middle name's Hastings. Oh, with Michael Hastings Esmond. Yep. Yeah. What, what song do you want to sing? The one we wrote for him. Okay. Let's hear it. Wayne's going to start it. Dear Michael. Dear Hastings. Michael. Thank you for paying them bills. <laughs> thank you so much. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Hey, fellas. Joshua. So you guys gave me one task, right? Right. Get a celebrity. Right. And get them on the show. <laughs> Come on, baby. Yeah, but we gave you that like a year and a half ago. Oh, well, yeah, like a, two years. You said it if takes you time to, to get a hold of celebrities. So I got the biggest celebrity out right now. Okay. I saw him on one Charlie of those. Charlie D'Amelio. That's close. Ta- Second. West. Third was my choice. Kanye. Okay. Um, this guy was tough to get. I had to pay him all of our monies. What okay. that we had? We have bills to this pay. You can't just pay. You can't just give our money away. This is celebrities. News to us. Well, we could have done another icebreaker. No, no, you're gonna love this. What? Uh, We're poor now. Thousand bucks got us a recorded call. Okay. Well, Greg was supposed to answer, but a call from Saint Nick, the Santa Claus North Pole. Come on, and and he's going to tell us if we're on naughty or nice list. You paid uh, can you you back paid up a Santa bit? Claus a thousand dollars. Did you say that Santa called the show? Yes, he and called. Greg answered. Line. No, Greg uh, actually for, bumped the call to voicemail. To voicemail. Okay. Okay. Yeah. He bumped Santa's. Call. Yeah, thanks, it was, Greg. It was zero one zero one North Pole. That's his phone number. I guess that's his phone number, yeah. Wait, you paid him for something we already knew? We could just call him ourselves. Uh, I don't think you knew the information he gave us. Okay. Uh -uh. So what is he giving us? Why is Santa calling in? Well, he did an intro for us that we can use whenever we want. Perfect. So next Christmas. Yeah. And then he gave us the, uh, uh, if we're on the naughty or nice list, so you know if we're going to get phone call or or, uh, gifts. Oh, so we know after this, we know if we're on the naughty or nice list. Is he coming down your chimney or not? Oh, God. I'm scared. Play Let's the play call. it. Let's play, play that it. call. Play that voicemail. Ho, ho, ho. Hello, fellas. Nice. Old Saint Nick here. So I got your request for a call in, and I got confirmation of your payment, so that's good. So that went through. Uh, so here I am. Per your request, I'll do an intro, and I'm granting you access to my naughty or noise list oh, God. for four people. You say noise? So let's get this <laughs> over with. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. St. Nick here for the Florida Men on Florida Man Podcast. I'm here to celebrate pre Xmas Florida style. So take your shirts off, boys, and get the lotion out. I'm about to. <laughs> but it's SPF 50. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Santa's first annual FM OFM. Naughty or noise 
list. Nice. First person nice. on my list today. Oh, God. Co-host Cameron. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> you have proudly portrayed an individual known as Italian Cam That's for the last two years. Very proudly. Yeah. This mocking version of Italians is the problem with America. Uh-oh. The blatant <laughs> disrespect to my Italian heritage what? has done more damage than Amanda Knox did to exchange student attendance in Perugia. In fact, what? Mark Wahlberg Jesus. in the Italian job does a better job of portraying an Italian and his character is American. What? Jesus. Naughty. Naughty. <laughs> Next, Amanda Wayne. Knox? Oof, where do I start, Wayne? Where do I start? <laughs> you were tasked, you were once tasked with cleaning out the work refrigerator around last May. Don't think I didn't see it. I saw it. You begrudgingly took on this chore. And to show your disgust, you decided to role play as a character you call the Fridge Führer. <laughs> but you were using true? a terrible Arnold Schwarzenegger accent. This was offensive. This was offensive to everybody. Although you thought you were alone, I was watching my man. This is what put you on the naughty list. Because each item in that fridge, you mocked it out loud. You're saying like things like, uh, for it being weak, for being a baby, not being strong like you. Your co-workers, you went through their labeled lunch bags. They weren't even safe. You felt super cool picking through each item, going through mocking it, like for lack of nutrition. Like, And similar to Cameron... You decided to use an offensive accent. About food? Oh yeah, I've got the transcript. Oh, this food is out of date. I would punish it immediately. <laughs> this lunch is not the nutritional requirements as laid out by the food pyramid. That was you? Jesus. Yeah, that's you, brother Wayne. It's, no, I didn't Naughty say list. That. Naughty. Next on the list. Oof. Oof. Uh, that's what this guy likes to say. And I'm tired of hearing it. <laughs> Josh, what? on your way to pick up food in a local restaurant establishment, you noticed an older person like myself, St. Nick, trailing behind you. Was it me? No, that's dumb. It wasn't me. It was an old person. <laughs> and in an act of kindness, you held the door open past the normal amount. Thank you. Please. Just so you could allow this old woman to enter first. I did. As she passed by, she says... Well, aren't you a nice young man? In a very soft, clearly grandma voice, to which you replied, Yes, sir, I try to be. <laughs> called her a sir. Oof. Instead of apologizing for misspeaking, you turned around, you left the establishment completely, without your food, without anything. All I have to say is thanks for the laugh. Noise, Liz. What? Noise. That's it, buddy. Thanks for the money. I'm out. Oh wait! So Santa, nice. Santa sounds like a jerk. Dude. He's a total jerk. <laughs> Y'all expect him to be? Cool? You're on the nice list nice. because you called an old grandma sir. You just got to make the dude laugh. Clearly, yeah. Santa sounds like a tyrant. Okay, so you have to make him laugh. That's obviously why my authentic Italian accent I didn't work on him. The it wasn't supposed to be funny. Prejudicial acts. You know you're. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, the huge Führer. Yeah, it sounds just like you. I don't believe <laughs> no. Santa called in at all. <laughs> Clearly, I'm it's starting not to me. believe you pretended to be Santa. I can't even do that voice. Ho, ho, ho. See? <laughs> I tried. I'm not even good at that. Last Christmas, we covered the town that was called Christmas. Sure. Right. Uh, and that city really captured the physical essence of the holiday season. Okay. It looked I like guess Christmas. You call or it snow. That. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this year, we're covering a town that really captures the spirit of the holiday season. Okay. Go on. This little town is called Berea. B A R E A H. Is that, that in Florida? Christmas like it's in Berea. Florida. Right. Berea, Florida was founded in 1857. By the Carlson family. 
Oh, yeah. Are families allowed to just establish towns? Well, you put a flag in it. Right. You put a flag down, say, my town. This is called Berea. Yeah, we cover it in the story, though. Uh, The Carlson family migrated to Florida um, after they were chased out of their home in Georgia. Mm. Um, Okay, chased is a strong word. uh, Well, actually, their exit from uh, Georgia is a huge part of their character. Right. Um, Basically, it's a big deal because when they lived in Georgia, um, they were known as the kindest sweetest people around cool um oh, hank, hank carlson was a preacher mm. his wife jenny was the school teacher and their four children were basically all angels oh that's like the perfect family yeah, everybody loved true. him right uh, they were well so you mean in the chaste community. you mean like celebrated like right. cider house rules you would please think, don't leave yeah. you would think right. so but while they were living in georgia an outlaw escaped prison okay and made his way into the area they were living at okay and basically, the whole town was like out to carry. Like they wanted some vigilante justice on this guy. Oh, he wasn't okay. a murderer. All he did was rob banks. Right. But the whole town shows up with pitchforks and, and torches, and they're like, "Hey, we're going to kill this guy who escaped oh, from prison." Jeez. This, the town sounds like bad people. But you would think so, right? So Hank Carlson goes, "Ah, uh, listen, come into our home. We'll keep oh. you safe." Okay. Mm. Well, so this prisoner escapes. Hank yeah. Carlson and the Carlson family they take him into their home. Like, you know, listen, we're going to protect you. They're harboring the town. a fugitive. Wow. The town shows up on their doorstep yep. with torches, pitchforks going, you either give them to us or we're going to kill you. What? So hmm. the town, this is 1800s. This is the preacher you're talking to. <clears throat> right. You would, yeah, exactly. It doesn't the matter. Family that everybody loves. He took my money out of the bank. Well, that's the thing. And so basically, uh, Hank Carlson, you know, protects this guy from being murdered. Okay. Um, and the town says, no, we're not going to do that. They set his barn on fire. Mm. and then set his house on fire. Well, that was a warning. The barn's a warning. To smoke him and his family out. Well, I think to burn them out. I think that's right. right, exactly. Right. Yeah. So the Carlson family are forced to flee Georgia. Wow. That's why they left. So they travel south into Florida. Um, and basically, we've covered this before on our show. Like in the 1800s, especially, Florida's a place for people who don't belong. They would mm-hmm. go there to hide and to mm-hmm. escape. True. And, True. You know, to find solace and whatnot. And so, because uh, it was a lawless swamp at the time. Get um, and they're traveling for weeks. And the Carlson family finally comes upon a huge piece of land in Florida that's uninhabited. And so according to the Homestead... The whole middle part. (laughs) Right. (laughs) For real. Yeah, so according to the Homestead Act, they claimed this land as theirs. Nice. Well, yeah, that kind of sucks. Like, hey, I'm going to town for a bit. Hope nobody takes my land. I know, right? <laughs> and then well, come back. How the homestead law kind of worked is if you if you found uninhabited land, yeah. mm. uh, you could claim it as your own as long as you agreed to maintain it for the state. Okay. Um, cool, cool, cool. And then basically the state wanted people to come to Florida. Naturally. Um, so they were just giving away property. Uh, so Hank and his wife, Jenny, and their four children single-handedly on this property, they built mm-hmm. a farm. Um, they built a home for themselves. They built a church. And then they built three extra houses. Mm. Wow. Oh, for the fugitive. Well, uh, kind of. Oh, geez. Their oh, no. philosophy was that if anyone passed through and they needed somewhere to stay, okay, they would be more than welcome to stay on the Carlson family property. In so, any of the three guest houses. Yeah. Well, no, not necessarily. Oh. Um, basically, they would give them the house. Oh, what? Yeah. Well, that's a tricky situation, right? Cause yeah, because it's anybody. not like, hey, you can stay for the weekend. You can stay forever. Yeah. Well, I think the mentality was people who were coming through like wouldn't want to leave. They were in hiding or running. Right. You know, they weren't vacation. Would They're you just be there creeped to help. out? Would you be creeped out if a family tried to give you a house on their property? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, maybe if I was on the run though, and I'm scared, I might not care. Yeah, yeah. yeah but so basically, um, after the Carlson family had been living on the land for a few months, mm-hmm. a mother and a child um, mm. show up, and they were um, they weren't just passing through; they were on the run, fleeing an abusive husband. Oh, um, well, take them in. And yeah. she said, basically, the mom says, can I just stay for the night? And the Carlson family said, no, like... You can stay forever. Yeah, well, here's the thing. Like, um, you know, like, if th- their their philosophy was, if you agree to pay it forward, um, you can have one of the extra houses. That's awesome. Like, Oddly you know, like, enough, the abusive husband came down. He's looking for a place. <laughs> oh, jeez. He's next door. Uh, but no, so they gave this lady a place to stay um, just to kind of, you know... Um, Help be out. At, be at peace. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's awesome. Wow. Okay. Uh, it's a big deal. Um, so, uh, but basically, that's the type of family the Carlsons were. Um, they just genuinely cared about other human beings. Mm-hmm. They didn't, I mean, even like with the fugitive, they just, they wanted, you know, uh, people to be taken care yeah. of. The next folks who wandered through the area were actually three men who had recently escaped slavery in North Florida. Got um, they were yep. on the run. Get my house. Um, Henry Carlson greeted the men on the property uh, and said, look, we'll give you safe haven. 
um, will protect you as long as you promise to pay it forward. Yeah. Uh, oh, nice. And you so think they're like, you think we could each get a house? Yeah, well, that, that's, <laughs> actually, that's actually what they did. Um, what? They built said, a house? Said, whatever life you live before coming here doesn't exist anymore. This is cool. where you start over. This oh. is where, like, you you know, you have a fresh start. And that's how the community kept growing. Wow. Um, Josh is hating how genuinely nice this family yeah, is. Yeah, right I'm waiting now. for the turn. I don't think no, it's coming. There, there really isn't. I think one. it's just genuinely They're happy. genuinely nice. With, with everybody ev- kept building everybody else's houses. Absolutely. With every new outcast or wanderer that came through, the people living on the land not only accepted them, but they built them a home on the property i wow. love it yeah absolutely so it's like a community built place for right. the community okay they eventually um added a post office a school and a mill uh, where they would all contribute and share food uh and they also had a community garden hmm. so oh, over wow. the course of three years 13 families and 28 individuals wow moved on to the carlson family property jeez okie dokie so a lot of people just kind of walking into town meandering yeah, yeah. yeah. uh at around the f- uh five year mark Mm-hmm. The people kind of got together and said that they should officially request to become a township. Okay. Um, and they wanted to reach out to the state of Florida and make everything kind of official. So mm-hmm. Hank Carlson, who had sort of become the de facto mayor, it's his property. Right. I get it. Um, he agreed that they should, and he began writing the letter to the governor's office to kind of make everything official. Um, and as they were composing the letter, they realized they needed a name for the place. Naturally, that's probably step one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, we're just calling it the Carlson family property. We need like an official Mm -hmm. name. So they held a council and that's where they came up with the name Berea. Um, Berea is actually Hebrew and it means to give. Oh, Oh, of course. I knew that. I wasn't going to ruin it for you. Okay. Thank you. Right. (laughs) Josh does actually speak. (laughs) Shalom. Yep. There (laughs) there it is. There it is. Uh, Basically, that, that the name sums up the entire message of the town's mm-hmm. existence. Oh, yeah. I mean, which is beautiful. Uh, the town of Berea only existed because of the Carlson family and their generosity. Uh, so the governor granted their request for township in 1857. Mm-hmm. And for 40 years, people who had lost all hope would wander through and wow. find a brand new beginning. Um, in 1893, Hank Carlson uh, actually passed away. And Jenny... His wife kind of took up the mantle as like the town's leader, mm-hmm. okay. like kind of the sage like figure. She was called Grandma Jenny by everybody Naturally. who lived there. Uh, she was the eldest kind of, you know, wise person. Um, and she actually had a lot of biological grandkids living there because their family just, you know, right. grew and reproduced. Yep. Uh, but she also had kind of adopted everyone else who, you know, lived in the town. Fun fact. Do you know where she learned that? Uh, there was a guy on the playground and he was like, oh, this is how... <laughs> Exactly. You. This is how you do it. Nice. Uh, this is how you grow the town. He said. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the downside of having a place that welcomes people with open arms mm. means you're going to attract some unsavory types. Right. It's this not, is what Josh is. It's, it's not all yeah. good people. Yeah. So there's always going to be those people who want to take advantage of a situation. Yes. And one evening, a man who already lived in Berea okay. came to Grandma Jenny okay. and told her that there was a situation in the next town over. Uh-oh. Some men, about 20 of them, had rode through the next town over, mm. killed the sheriff, and burned down a good chunk of the houses and the buildings. And stuff. Well, that's okay. a problem. That is a problem. Yep. That's we don't problem. allow that in Florida. Yeah, no. We, we don't like that. I think when you come into Berea, it says, don't burn down any houses. Don't, Please. Don't kill any Please. of us. Please, because they're polite. Yeah. So next town over, they get it hit hard. This guy says to Grandma Jenny, that's too close for comfort. I think we should form some sort of defense force. Oh, here we go. What wow. if they come our way? Here we go. So they, we, he's like, we need a sheriff. And Grandma Jenny goes, I disagree. Oh, okay. She well. said, who would train this defense force? Uh, because the sheriff wow. in the closest town over is murdered. Right. Uh, and none of us are fighters. We're farmers and gardeners and teachers. Like who, They're all what? home builders. Right, That's exactly. Right. Get them. So Grandma Jenny, she sent this guy on his way and said, this is a quote, we will welcome them with kindness. And as a result, we will be taken care of. Jeez. Okay. Uh, I'm so, interested to see. So Jenny carries out this kind of wise authority. Um, and uh, basically, um, you know, like she's the oldest in town. And from her perspective, they've been welcoming people that the world's rejected for 40 years. Yeah. Right. It's worked what out can just go fine. wrong now? Right. She had faith it would all work out. Unfortunately for mm. the citizens of Berea, Uh-oh. the chaos that had found itself in the next town over yes. made its way to their streets as mm. well. In December of 1897, a few weeks after Grandma Jenny's conversation about the defense force, 20 mm-hmm. plus men on horseback rode through their streets of the little town, attacking innocent people Jeez. Mm. and setting fire to the majority of the houses, including the post office. Mm. Um, their leader was a man called John, Jim Miller, 
who was one of the most wanted men in the United States. Okay. He was wanted for murder in five southern states, including Florida, and he had decided that he and his gang needed a place to permanently set up camp. Well, maybe if you don't burn down things. Right. Stop can, burning stuff down, Jim. Yeah, they would have given you a house. For, they would have given all of you a house. <laughs> <laughs> you could just stop and like, yeah, yeah stop burning houses. things. Wait, wait, wait. So I have to stop burning things to live in And it? Grandma Jenny's like, please. Yeah. And he's like, I can't. I can't. I'm pyro. Uh, what's that called? Nope, yeah, you got it. Pyromania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just pyro. So sadly, um, these men had set their eyes on Berea as their like base camp. They mm. wanted somewhere out in the wilderness Yikes. they could kind of call their own. Jim Miller, the leader of the gang, he called out to the citizens of Berea and said to calmly make your way to the church. We're going to have a town meeting. Uh-oh. Don't like that. Don't like that Not at, at all. all. If anyone resisted, you will be shot in front of your families. Jeez. Hmm. So Grandma Jenny calmly as a leader tells everyone just do as the man says Mm -hmm. um so one by one every man woman and child of this peaceful little town made their way over to the church and this church has served as a place Mm -hmm. of peace and comfort for this town for decades it was one of the first buildings they built for that's true right and i'm hoping it stays that way but unfortunately oh no here we go the scene inside the church was vastly different um everyone had their hands and feet bound what and then they were all tied together this is a christmas story i thought it, What's well, happening? And, and so the citizens... Oh, a group baptism, ideally? No, unfortunately, uh, these people have their hands tied together, their feet tied together, and then they're tied to each other. So the town's kind of bound together. Jeez. Yeah. Jim Miller and his gang tells them that they would be fed once a day until the food what? ran out, wow. at which point they could choose to starve or be executed. What hmm. in the world? This is a pickle. Yeah, this is so a pickle. So either way, the town of Berea now belonged to a murderous tyrant. Right. Grandma Jenny tried her best to keep everyone encouraged. Yeah. But after weeks of being tied up and held oh hostage inside the church, everyone was starting to lose hope. Right. And yeah. to taunt the citizens, every evening at midnight, a member of the Jim Miller gang would enter the church, climb the stairs to the steeple, and ring the church bell. I'm not a big fan of this gang. No, me no. Jim Miller gang. They can leave. What had once been the sound of hope, the bell, was now just a gruesome reminder that they had spent an entire day in captivity once right. again. Oof. Um, but for Grandma Jenny, she used the midnight church bell as a way to keep track of how many days had actually gone by. Okay. Mm-hmm. And to her surprise, her granddaughter, who was bound and tied up next to her, was doing the same thing. So on December 24th, when the midnight church bell rang, Jenny's granddaughter looked up at her and said, Grandma, it's Christmas morning. Get out of here. Everything's going to be okay. I just know it's going to be okay. Okay. Come on. What is happening? So Jenny smiled and was encouraged by the faith of her little granddaughter. Yeah. Right. Come on. But about half an hour later. Oh, gosh. The people heard something on the rooftop. Oh, my. Don't you dare. Like a, <laughs> don't you dare. Like a thump. Okay. okay. They, had do- they had kind of dozed right. off. They hear mm. something on the rooftop. Right. They hear more sounds from above, followed by... A commotion and a crash on the front porch. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then there's silence. Yeah. The door of the church quietly opens, and a very tall man in a cowboy hat steps inside. Bull Loney. He says, Don't My name is Bo Mazel. No. Oh my God. And I'm here to rescue you. Oh, there is no way. This is Bone Mazel cut is... the ropes off Grandma Jenny. What? Gives, Not, gives her his no. knife and says, free your people, but stay inside the church. I'll be right Are back. Are you kidding me? Without another word, Bone Mazel left the church. And the air was immediately filled with gunfire. Are Men you were screaming. Me? Men Bone were yelling. <laughs> it was absolute chaos in the oh streets. Oh my God. But after about 20 minutes, there was okay. silence again. And a voice called out, <laughs> you folks come on outside. It's safe now. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. Slowly but surely, every citizen of Berea exited the church for the first time in almost a month. Okay. There, surrounded by the bodies of his men, <laughs> sat Jim Miller tied up on the ground next to their hero, Bone Mazel. Okay. Bone told them that he had been tracking this gang for months. Of course. Um, and when he saw they had ended up at Berea, he knew he needed to intervene immediately. Yeah. He told them not to worry about Jim Miller. Yeah. And that he would take care of that himself. And without another word, he placed the murderous tyrant on the back of his horse, climbed on himself, okay. and then rode off never to be seen again. <laughs> oh, my God. What? Never to be seen again? The people of oh, from the people oh, of Berea. Okay, okay. Yeah, the yeah, people yeah. of Berea <laughs> rebuilt their town, but slowly after the tragedy of that year, mm. uh, they started slowly kind of moving on, going elsewhere. Mm-hmm. But the town of Berea still exists today Unreal. in Polk County, Florida. No, what? Wait, what? It is a shell of what it once was. It's, okay. no, it's no longer an official town because yeah. no one actually lives there anymore. But the church, Berea Baptist, still stands. No. And the great, great, great grandchildren of Grandma Jenny still tell the story about how Bo Mazel and their Christmas miracle Holy saved God. their bloodline Way. 100 wow. years ago. 
No. I Merry Christmas, everybody. Unreal. What? It's a Bone <laughs> Mazelle Christmas story. It's a Bone Mazelle Christmas. A bone Here's Mazelle the thing. Christmas. If you're just tuning into our show, we've talked about Bone Mazelle a couple times. Wow. He is this hero. He's the person they termed the coin cowboy after. I yeah. mean, he is a legendary lawman in Florida. Yep. He's known for just kind of doing these outrageous you know, in this case, miraculous things. Right. Yep. He what was, was a, it? He could whip a fly off of cow's a butt cow's without butt. the cow noticing. That's it. He was a legendary cowboy from Florida. He is probably the greatest Florida man we've ever discussed. Wow. And wow. he just saved Christmas. He just saved Christmas. Uh, he, he not only saved Christmas, he saved a whole town. Yeah, he did. How, what What was he doing on the roof? No one knows you know how. Like, how did he even get there? <laughs> he that, probably rode that, his whip up. There's, no, there's no trees by the church. <laughs> Jeez. <he> just, <laughs> <laughs> he just he just manifested on top what? of the church. Oh, Who knows? It. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. We should ask Grandma Jenny's family. But you know what? I think that just oh goes to gosh. show that Bone Mazelle deserves a spot in our hearts and in our homes this oh, Christmas yeah. season. I that's think right. that's World what we famous. should be doing. Yeah. But Merry it. Christmas to you guys if you're listening before Christmas. Merry Christmas to you if you're listening after Christmas. It's true. If you celebrate, um, you know, yeah, all uh, the other ones. Yeah, differently this holiday season. Yeah. Uh, we wish you a happy and and uh, safe time. And from off on podcasts, we've been here for you throughout all the holidays, and we're gonna do it for as long as you listen. Yes, we have FMOFM podcast. I'm speechless, guys. I am too. I mean, from from where we came from with Santa Claus and his uh, his dirty oof, mouth. I, Can we? I, agree I'm just like that. Santa should be replaced by Bone Mazel. I easily. absolutely would vote for that. A long legged yeah. cowboy come down my chimney. Amen. Any Amen. Day. Any day. I go nuts for cowboy butts. Mm-hmm.